Thank you for allowing me to address this issue. Uh, I am not a surgeon, I'm a sports physician. I have to advocate for my patients. My patients come in all shapes and sizes. Some are getting paid to be an athlete, others are doing it for recreation, but all have the same common denominator. I want to return, I want to do what's best for my knee. What I'd like to do is look at some of the data. I can't look at all of it because you mentioned ACL in front of a knee surgeon and they salivate and uh, heart rate goes up. And so there's an abundance of information. I tried to select some that are representative to try to get some of the points uh, across. And then once knowing this information, how do I advocate for my patient in uh, recommending? Well, first of all, I detest the term conservative treatment because that would imply there is a liberal treatment. I consider those two opposites. So I prefer to, in fact, I had a patient call me on this one, said, so you're withholding some of your treatment that you give to athletes, but not to me, because I was using a conservative approach. So I choose to use the terms surgical or non-surgical, operative, non-operative. Well, first of all, in the United States, uh, ACL reconstruction, the sixth most common procedure, uh, complication rates are reported between 10 and 30 percent, and then failure is certainly not on the high end at 49 percent very often, but rarely do we see it on the low end of the, the 3 percent in, in terms of injury. And we'll look at some of the newer data that reflects that. Also in the United States, it's very big business. $625 million in 2015 spent in ACL reconstruction. And in the United States, I'm not sure the attitude here or other parts of the world from where many of you come, but if there is an ACL injury that's broken, the patient intuitively says, well, we should fix it. And is that always the best solution? Typically, we've measured success as a return to sport. Roald Barr, about 11 years ago, wrote an article saying, ethically, are, should we reconstruct these to send them back to battle? If I have a, a soldier and I take care of the wound, repair it, is it ethical to send them back to battle again? So some have said, rather than return to sport, it's a little bit too simple. We should look at a number of criteria. And so they had a consensus group said, what are the important things to determine success uh, in returning from an ACL injury, whether it be uh, surgery or non-surgical? Well, absence of giving away, return to sport, absence of recurrent effusions, symmetry of quadriceps muscle strength as well as can be done, and then look at some of the outcomes. Notice absent is measuring ligament laxity. So my concerns as a clinician representing and advocating for my uh, athletes is, is it safe? What's the best way to get you to return to sport? And then how does it affect your longevity in that particular sport? What are the consequences of this injury or the surgery? Uh, is it osteoarthritis? And then looking at a special population, what can we best advise our ACL injured youth? Because they have years of competition lying in front of them. Well, here we have a systematic review that looked uh, about three and a half years worth. And following surgery, 82% returned to some form of sports participation, some form. 63% went back to their pre-injury levels, a little less than two-thirds. But at the final follow-up at three and a half years, only 44% remained at their pre-injury level. But when canvassing the athletes, they said 90% said it was successful to their personal criteria. If we look at a, a, a series of uh, athletes were uh, compared to uninjured, ACL reconstructed, and not on the graph is a group that were non-operatively treated. And you can see that over seven years, uh, how the number of participants drops at that particular level with the ACL injured compared to the, uh, if I can get the cursor going here. So this is a non-injured group, and this is the injured group, and seven years later, significant number have, have uh, dropped from their sport. Interestingly, the numbers of those that treated non-operatively ended up at the same position as the operative group in terms of how many participating at year seven. This was a, a study that uh, really wasn't a matched group, but they were self-selected, and uh, you can see the number of 57 had ACL reconstruction, 22 chose not to have ACL reconstruction. And if we look at the return to the previous level of activity, again, with no time interval, we find out that 58% in the operative group, 82% in the non-operative group. Again, self-selected for one reason or another. Uh, but we find out that 11 of those 57 had a re-injury of some sort on the reconstructed ACL. Both, all of them reported similar instability, uh, pain uh, following injury. 
Another group looked at the five-year outcomes, and this was a, a group that uh, uh, 62 were assigned to the ACE over construction group, and these were all comers. It wasn't necessarily high-level athletes, 55 non-operatively. And what they did is took that first group and they had surgery when it was appropriate, that four, six, eight weeks, whenever, whatever the decision was made. There's another group that tried to go it non-operatively. And of that group, if some said, well, I have too much instability, I'd like to have surgery, they had surgery late. And half of that non-operative group opted for surgery because of persistent instability. They did eliminate the high-level athletes and those people who were essentially couch potatoes. The results showed that if we compare outcomes, we find out that obviously mechanical stability was higher in those at reconstruction, but if we look at the functional performance and their knee outcome study, uh, their uh, satisfaction with the injury and their activity level, there was no difference between the operative group and non-operative group. And more importantly, there weren't different in outcomes that those that opted to have their ACL recon uh, reconstructed late rather than early, saying that my knee just isn't working, do something about it. This was a, uh, a study that uh, compared uh, operative and non-operative, and they're a fairly similar population. Uh, obviously, the mechanical stability when measured with the KT-1000 was different, and uh, those were treated non-operatively versus those operatively. But if we look at outcomes, the outcomes are almost identical to patient satisfaction, patient performance. A uh, recent study in uh, professional football, and this is not American football, this is uh, soccer, as we call it, but at three years, 86% had returned to their sport, but only two-thirds were playing at their previous level, and this is only three years post-op. If we look at another group, and to make sure that we're appropriately describing the risks of the surgery, we find out that uh, in a meta-analysis that overall, of those that were reconstructed, 15% had an injury, 7% had an ipsilateral, 8% had contralateral ACL injury, 15%. Now, if we look at the younger age group, those are in competitive sports primarily, that jumps up to 23% ipsilateral plus contralateral injury. So are we advising our athletes at uh, the secondary school level or early prof uh, college professional level, whatever, that if we reconstruct, there's one chance in four, you're gonna have another injury that we have to have the same discussion all over again. Osteoarthritis, one of the concerns. This is a study, uh, the follow-up group at seven years and 11 years. You can see the comparison of the operative and non-operative groups. And you can see the osteoarthritis incidences are fairly similar at those uh, seven and 11 year follow-ups. Another study looking at radiological osteoarthritis. And again, this may not correlate well with symptomatic osteoarthritis, but it's one objective measure we have. The operative and non-operative groups are fairly similar at the 10-year follow-up. So osteoarthritis seems to be a problem. So the conclusion is ACL reconstruction is not an adequate intervention to prevent knee osteoarthritis. However, a more recent study suggested that perhaps we've been overcalling the incidence of radiographic osteoarthritis, and this one showed a slightly lower percentage, all those with meniscectomy did not do nearly as well. Then the third population is what about that 10, 11, 12, 14, 15 year old skeleton is still immature, what can we recommend to them? Well, uh, and we find that data is fairly conflicting, at least in my review. Uh, in one prospective cohort, uh, they found that uh, at this younger group, 36 were treated non-operatively, and they just followed those. They didn't follow the reconstruction group necessarily, but they did publish their data in the non-operative group. And nine of 10 were able to return to their uh, jumping, pivoting sports or physical education. However, 38% went from level one, which is the highest level of activity, to a level two, which is slightly less than that out of uh, four or five levels of activity. And in the non-operative group, there were additional meniscal injuries in 13%, which has always been a concern. If I have unstable knee, I play to, uh, place it at greater risk. Now, if we follow those people out, uh, a study by Engelbretson and a group from Norway, they found out that satisfaction was pretty good, at least out two years in these uh, youngsters who did not have surgery for their uh, torn ACLs. And in fact, another study came out said that the predictability of having meniscal injury because of not repairing the ACL seems to be a lot lower than we initially thought. So maybe that preventing further meniscal injury by reconstructing an ACL may not be uh, quite as significant as we had thought. However, we look at another study, those that had an acute ACL reconstruction, this is a, a useful group, had a delayed ACL reconstruction, or those who 
had uh, an indeterminate delay with the reconstruction compared to non-operative. And you can see the longer they waited, the results seemed to be a little bit worse for this group in terms of returning to sport and to full activity. The time to full recovery, however, was not studied, but this was a uh, kind of a satisfaction survey and returning to a level of activity. Uh, another group looked at uh, non-operative to operative treatment and found out that 85% uh, of the operative group versus none in the non-operative group uh, were able to return to the prior level of injury. And then they looked at meniscal injury. And in this group, again, conflicting with other data, suggests meniscal injury is much uh, higher rate. So how can we put all this together as best we can? Well, there's certainly limited evidence to suggest a superiority between con reconstruction versus non-operative management and functional outcomes. Now, this is not necessarily dealing with that high-level athlete, but it's dealing with a large part of the population that I see. They're skiing, tearing ACL. They're playing recreational soccer, tearing ACL. Uh, but we have to at least present an option of not reconstructing in some cases and let them choose shared decision-making with the data that we have. And so uh, the recommendation by this group is that those who tear an ACL, again, we're eliminating those professionals, we have to, should offer because if we trial them non-operative treatment and fail, the results are still pretty good if they're reconstructed late. So how do we do that? Well, uh, there's been a study out of Delaware and studies out of Norway suggesting we can do functional testing after the rehabilitation. And those who seem to be successful may do well as culpers. Uh, Bill Dexter, you saw, played national level rugby. Uh, he was one of the culpers. He did not have his ACL reconstructed. Uh, and so people can perform at a high level uh, if necessary. So there are ways to screen. Another prospective study looked uh, out of uh, Norway also looked at uh, doing some functional testing before committing to surgery. Those who did well in the functional testing continued to perform without. If they had recurrent instability as a result of sport participation, they could reconsider and have ACL reconstruction if they thought it was a wise decision. So once again, in the face of growing evidence, we know that early onset NEOA is a risk after ACL is ruptured, whether you reconstruct or don't reconstruct. And so we have to maybe reconsider our al algorithm instead of putting everybody in the surgery group. Again, this is looking at the citizen recreational athlete, not the professional athlete, to offer options that are non-operative. So we can finally say ACL reconstruction does improve the stability of the knee. Functionally, it may not be any different for some people. ACL reconstruction does return athletes to sport, but their careers are shorter at that high level of activity. Osteoarthritis is an outcome of the injury, not necessarily how we treat the injury. And youthful athletes may do better with ruptured ACLs if they are reconstructed. More to come. Thank you.